Hey, good Wednesday morning, March 26th, 2025. Michael Clark with BAM Weather. It is uh, 9 a.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about the forecast today and uh, the the uptick in severe weather and the activity and the pattern just ramping up as well. Be sure to share it with a friend. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And we'll get right into today's analysis. This is a look here at Radar this morning. Um, Again, you could probably tell from just by the look of this thing that it's cold this morning here, late March. It's nothing too crazy, but it is cold. It's 29 in Iowa. It's 30 in northern Indiana. It's 32 degrees up there in the northeast. And temperatures, uh, you know, down into the lower 50s as far north there as our upper, fi- uh, upper 40s as far north as um, Alabama and, and Georgia. So uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, it's a bit chilly and uh, I'll tell you, we've we've got a change coming, but it's going to come with um, a trade-off as well. This is a look here right now at the current U.S. Drought Monitor. And an area I continue to really focus on or be concerned with is, is honestly, is what I would do is probably this. But you kind of take it and, and make your own assumption here of <clears throat> this area in here. You know, this is the area I continue to be concerned with as we get into spring and into summer. I think this area in here turns uh, excessively wet in the coming weeks, okay? Uh, for context, it's it's been dry. The last four weeks, we've seen it dry up a little bit. We've seen it get wet in some spots. I think you're going to notice a change here. <clears throat> but what I talked about, the, 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 the glaring concern right now in the last four weeks has been the trend through here. And I'm concerned what this can do as we get into the the you know late spring and into summer and what it can do for the the pattern overall here all right uh, dry can breed dry and so we kind of know that this is a look at the month to date precipitation departures from normal again we've really needed rain in Iowa northern Illinois northern Indiana Wisconsin this rain has been much needed we need more of it we're going to get some um, but you, again you can kind of still see what I'm talking about in and through here. There has just been a lack of rainfall, and gosh, specifically down here to the deep south, there's been a lack of rain. If you've gotten moisture up there in the central plains, gosh, it's come in the form of a blizzard, right? Um, temperatures have been very warm, though. It's interesting enough that um, you can have some extremes in there and still be this warm. And this looks a lot like 2012 in many ways. So again, very interesting. Nonetheless, here the start to the month, um, and that kind of can give us an idea, indication of where we're going to go, obviously, but I'm going to look at the <clears throat> European model. This is the 10-day forecast for rainfall. The first thing I want you to notice here, now these maps here from uh, Tomer Berg here, Polar WX, appreciate these being available, but uh, obviously anywhere in, in the red um, is, that's four inches of rain. All right. Um, and you can see where the, the focus is for that over the next 10 days. <clears throat> um, and there's going to be a couple of significant there may be some convective feedback going on in here possibly but there's going to be a couple of of significant storm systems in this region that can produce tornadoes and severe weather as well Uh, but nonetheless what a what a crazy map here for uh, precipitation let's take a look let's take a look at just the surface here and and the weather over the coming days we're going to see a little bit of a weak disorganized wave of precipitation come through the central u.s and uh, down through portions of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. That is actually, if you look, here's our area of low pressure. We do some surface analysis. That is actually a warm front. Our front's back out and through here. As this front lifts north, we call that isentropic lift. Thunderstorms, elevated thunderstorms, can break out across the the advancement of that front as it lifts north. And it could bring some thunderstorms in here Thursday night into Friday. Uh, maybe some elevated uh, hail, some hail, uh, hailers, if you will, some morning small hailstorms and some thunder there Friday morning as this moves through the area. <clears throat> Watch that area of low pressure. It really starts to get its act together Saturday into Sunday. And then we, again, we are looking at, look at this, more, more backside like blizzard threats, if you will. It's crazy look there. Uh, big storm system comes through Nebraska, Iowa. All right. You got mixed precipitation going on up there across the Dakotas, Minnesota, and up through portions of Wisconsin, and more rain across the Ohio River Valley, uh, Tennessee Valley, deep south. All right. Then the storm system organizes, deepens a little bit, and Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, it's possible that this area here then starts to 
to look at the potential for stronger storms, potentially an outbreak of severe weather. As you've got a low here, you've got a low here, your upper level jets streaking through, and um, you've got your 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 right rear and your and your left front exit regions where there's going to be some focal points for some severe weather here Sunday night and into Monday. All right, there's already a pretty large scale um, risk out for that. Heavy rain too. All right, this is going in through Monday morning. That will be a probably Monday uh, severe risk here along the East Coast. will probably be a big squall line, a big line of thunderstorms that wraps up on the backside. And look at this. Look behind it. Another, another shot of reinforcing cold air. That's that 540 line. Temperatures are going to be flirting with at or below freezing temperatures but, uh, potentially again out to April 1st. That's, that's meaningful. Watch the next storm get its act together. Does the same damn thing. I mean, same thing. I mean, look at this. Low pressure, strong warm front. Here's your front. Here's your cold front right in through here. Uh, north side here, you've got, it's interesting. It's, it's like a winter pattern because you have this banana high like setup. You've got high pressure over the northeast, high pressure bearing down on the backside. So you can push colder air into the storm. And the, the model is seeing that. It's taking advantage of it and uh, putting snow down in the North Plains again. And another big stunt, uh, storm system possible. Uh, this is the, the evening of the 2nd and into the 3rd of April. But look at this. This could be another another outbreak of thunderstorms, possibly severe here, uh, the 3rd and 4th of April. Okay, so we'll, we'll want to watch this uh, for the continued risk here of severe thunderstorms, or right, stronger storms, and it just kind of comes through in waves it's it's really remarkable again there's your total rain all right that red is four inches that's the european i'm going to show you the gfs real quick the gfs is not really as uh, that's the zero z let me go to the 60 not as excited there for rainfall but you can see that there are isolated heavier amounts as i said the european may be battling with some convective feedback a little bit let's look at the ai run though the, the artificial intelligent forecast run of the but argue that it's confident it's confident in significant, significant rain totals in here in the coming, uh, you know, 10 days. So nothing to, to bat an eye at right now. Nothing to, nothing to dismiss. This is the day, the day five severe weather outlook goes as far north as Fort Wayne, as far south down there as uh, the, the, the Houston area down and through uh, deep south Louisiana for day five. And, you know, looking at everything I've looked at, um, I do have a, a pretty big concern for an outbreak of tornadoes in here personally um, i think in this area here right now now this can this can change um, again we're five days out but i am worried about the potential of another tornado outbreak here sunday all right that threat shifts east into monday i think it's a big squall line area of damaging winds and still some tornadoes are not out of the question uh, as this threat shifts off to the east okay so week one well, week one, we can see uh, where the storm system is, right? We can see the low pressure uh, as we, we kind of we talk about the warm front, the cold front draping through. There's your low tracking. You're going to get the cold precip here. You're going to get the severe weather here, the above normal rains. Uh, week two, look at this. This is crazy. This is a strong signal for big rains in week two. Um, and, and here's the thing. We get mild. Overall, the pattern is mild. Week two, though, what happens is some some ridging is establishing to the east, and we're running a trough into a ridge, and we're going to look at potentially another outbreak of severe weather in that week two time frame, that 3rd through 4th, 5th of April. There could possibly be another uh, regional outbreak of severe weather. Uh, warm east, cooler back to the west and north plains behind the fronts. Big, big shots of cold, and then quick moderations. Okay, Week three and four, this is a look here, again, kind of painting that picture as I just talked about. Uh, there's this, this, this gradient in here, and where that happens, there's above normal precipitation signals. It's going to continue to run very wet in the eastern grain belt, drier in the central and western grain belt. Week four, mid-April at some point, perhaps a front slides through, and it could be cooler for a time. But there's a big signal for heat building in the central and south central U.S. There could be some rain across the top as the front moves through in week four, but there's a signal building. There's a signal building in the North Pacific, and there's a signal building in the analogs. We're running very closely right now to three years in, in particular, 2001, 2011, and 2012. The mean location of the ridge in these three years for April was here with, a, with the attendant trough running into it. 
setting up an active pattern. Look out here in the Bering Sea, uh, just by day two, big, big ridge uh, trough in the, in the west. You could argue this pattern, it's showing up, correlation would be for April, as there can be times of really warm weather, for sure, but really strong fronts mixed in. Uh, bringing in temperatures that can frost and freeze behind the fronts and um, allowing for some really significant thermal gradients to set up, which would aid in the severe weather risk. All right. When we look at these years and what they did in April, here's where the significant warmth really set up shop. All right. This, this is where the warmth really kind of took hold in April of these years and the precipitation um, really took hold uh, really in the, in the kind of the heart of the U.S. growing regions, um, the concern is a couple of bigger tornado events. Um, if you look at this line here, this dashed line, this right here is 2011, right? This is pretty crazy. It is a year in and of its own league, okay? Um, and and it, it's a strong runner. Here's where we, are, where we are right now. I mean, we're certainly above the, the, the normal, all right? Uh, right now of, of tornadoes and we're above the normal of winds we're almost uh, uh, riding along 2011. These years 01 was also a very busy severe weather year big outbreak in April of 01. Um, but look at this look at the, the similarities okay a little cooler in here cooler to the west here's European weekly cooler west a little cooler in here you've got the majority of the warmth focused here look at where the majority of the precipitation is focused and the dryness really for the most part these are very similar. These are very, very similar forecasts to the analogs. And then both these three years featured their fair share of severe weather. March of 2012, we had the tornado outbreak in the Ohio Valley. It took the Henryville EF4, Henryville, Indiana EF4 tornado. Um, these are not any slouches for severe weather um, in, in that, with that respect. I threw in the CFS V2, the American model too. It's very similar to the analog package and uh, I really have no reason to discredit or disbelieve this look right now for the month of April. A very wet one, a very stormy one with probably enhanced severe weather risks and at times very warm, but at times strong fronts to go along with it. So this was our updated three and four week official forecast that was issued uh, yesterday. Yesterday, you can see what I'm talking about. All right. They left the door open here. Um, looks like Kirk made this. They left the door open for the fronts, but you can see where it can be very warm. And then here's the precip. We strongly agree with this map in general, where the above normal is focused and what is capable of, of happening here in April. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. That's the thought process right now. We'll continue to keep you posted. Watch for a couple bigger severe weather events this weekend and again next week. If you've got questions, let us know. I do want to make sure you all are aware, guys, for those of you watching, subscribe to the YouTube video or the YouTube channel. But you can go to BAMWX.com. Right now, we're free trialing our platform. You can go and, and, and check it out. Top right-hand corner, hit start free trial. You can try it out today. No credit card required. Share it with a friend. Talk to you soon.